Hello, my name is Kathy and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with muscle, bone and joint ailments starting with the letter S and T. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system. Then I'll address issues with the skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, bladder, then ailments specific to women and specific to men, then issues of the hormones and the metabolism. After that, I'll address the issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations, and the immune system, then issues surrounding fertility and pregnancy and surrounding childbirth and postnatal problems then homeopathic remedies that address special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescence, and finally, special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone's a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it's recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and, the, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, Nature mirror people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of stooped appearance with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings, and an account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illness, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So, let us continue with learning how homeopathic Pathic treatments can help with muscle, bone, and joint ailments, starting with the letter S and T. The body is a wonderful system of bony levers and casings bound together by ligaments and moved, supported, and protected by muscles. Where bones meet, there are joints. Most joints are enclosed in a sleeve or capsule of tough fibrous tissue lined with cells that secrete a special lubricant, the synovial fluid. The ends of the bones themselves are covered in a special kind of cartilage called hyaline cartilage, which is smooth and tough and nourished by the synovial fluid. The fluid and the smooth articulating surfaces of the bones ensure friction-free movement. The largest synovial joints in the body occur at the shoulder, elbow, hip, and knee, and between the pelvis and sacrum. There are other kinds of joints too, although these occur in lesser numbers. The weight-bearing surfaces of the vertebrae, for example, are separated by discs of fibrous cartilage with a tough, tough outside and a softer inside. The vertebrae stack up 
on each other, separated by the shock-absorbing discs. The knee, because it is both load-bearing and freely movable, has a fluid-filled joint capsule with two partial di discs of cartilage inside it. Where muscle tendons cross joints, there are special anti-fraying structures called bursae, which are small fluid-filled sacs of connective tissue. They are bursae above and behind the knee, at the top of the femur and humerus, at the back of the foot and front of the elbow, and so on. The knee, the knee is unique in having a small shield of bone called the patella in front of the joint. Without it, kneeling would be impossible, and the tendon at the quadriceps at the front of the thigh would soon wear through or get nipped in the joint as the knee straightened. Every joint in the body has its own range of movement. The shoulder has the greatest, followed by the wrist, the head and neck, and the hip. Healthy ligaments check joint movements, keeping it within stable limits. Healthy muscles, whose inelastic tendons insert into bone close to the joints they move, also keep joints within stable limits. An extramobile joint, therefore, is not necessarily a healthy one. A hypermobile joint in the spine, for example, usually means that other vertebrae joints are not as mobile as they should be. If muscles are weak, giving little stability or protection to a joint, the task of stabilizing and protection falls entirely on the ligaments and the joint capsule itself. Unlike muscles, ligaments and joint capsules have no contractile powers. They can only stretch. With traumatic or habitual strain, the joint becomes inflamed, causing stiffness, pain, swelling, and loss of mobility. It may even dislocate, becoming useless because the fulcrum against which the muscles exert their leverage has fallen apart. If trauma is sudden and severe, ligaments tear, tendons rupture or rip away from their bony moorings, muscle fibers break, and bones fracture. However, most of the muscular aches and pains that take people to their doctor, osteopath, chiropractor, physiotherapist, or acupuncturist do not have such spectacular causes. They are a result of poor posture, depression, anxiety, occupational demands, lack of exercise, and the slow process of aging. Bone, contrary to popular conception, is one of the most active tissues in the body. It is well supplied with blood vessels and is continuously repairing and remodeling itself in response to stress and load. Exercise and sufficient calcium and vitamin D in the diet encourage growth, maintenance, and repair. In fact, calcium is continually exchanged between the bones and the blood in order to keep sufficient calcium in the blood for nerves and muscles to function properly. In an adult, the manufacture of blood components, red and white blood cells and platelets, is carried out in the marrow inside the vertebrae, best breastbone, ribs, pelvis, and the heads of the humerus and femur. Shoulder Problems Fractures and dislocations are the most serious kinds of injuries in the shoulders, causing pain, loss of movement, and visible deformity. The appropriate action is to call 911 and give Arnica 30C, every 30 minutes for up to 10 doses. Strenuous exercise or overuse can result in pulled muscles, sprains, and bursitis. Though the shoulder will still be movable, standard treatment is to put the arm in a sling to rest the shoulder joint until it heals, then physiotherapy. If the shoulder dislocates repeatedly, an operation to tighten the ligaments or build up the rim of the shoulder socket may be necessary. Osteoarthritis may develop in a shoulder joint that has been injured and immobilized for any length of time. Another consequence of injury may be frozen shoulder, which is stiffness, pain, and loss of mobility in the shoulder. Rheumatoid arthritis. Swelling, stiffness, and pain is uncommon in the shoulder joints, and gout even less common. Choose the appropriate homeopathic remedy from the videos of those listed under the conditions mentioned above. If none seems particularly suitable, choose one of the remedies below. If the shoulder pain persists, see your doctor. Specific remedies to be given four times daily for up to 14 days. For rheumatic pain in the right shoulder that wears off during sleep but is made worse by movement or pressure, use Sanguinaria 6C. For pain in the right shoulder, especially around the lower angle of the shoulder blade, 
with headaches, use Chelidonium 6C. For rheumatic pain in the shoulder that is relieved by walking and cold makes the pain worse, as does sitting still or getting overheated, with the pain most intense around midnight, use Ferrum 6C. For burning pain in the shoulder that is worst in cold damp weather and after sleep or rest, and the pains wear off with gentle exercise, use Rust Tox 6C. For rheumatic pain in the left shoulder, which feels dead and heavy, with a tendency to bring the shoulder forward, as if protecting the chest, use Sulfur 6C. Self-help. Rest is the best medicine. Hot or cold applications may help to ease the pain. Sprains. Sprains are a partial or complete rupture of the ligaments that hold joints together. Most vulnerable joints are the ankles, wrist, knees, and fingers. A mild sprain causes some pain and swelling, but the joint remains functional. Rest in a support bandage and the use of ice packs to reduce the swelling, and then very carefully resumption of use is all that is required. A severe sprain in which most of the ligaments around a joint are torn may be mistaken for a fracture. The joint quickly swells, stiffens, and becomes too painful to move, and may need to be immobilized in a cast for several weeks. Very badly torn ligaments may need to be repaired surgically. In either case, physiotherapy will be necessary to restore the range of movement. Specific remedies to be taken every 12 hours for up to one week. For recurrent sprained ankles, use natrium carb. 30C. Tendinitis. Tendinitis is the tearing of fibers in the tendons which connect muscles to bones, causing inflammation, soreness, and pain. It is usually caused by injury or overuse. The Achilles tendon in the heel is particularly vulnerable, as are tendons in the elbow, causing tennis elbow and golfer's elbow, although hitting a ball is not a prerequisite. If the specific remedies and self-help measures mentioned below do not improve matters within seven days, see your doctor. Specific remedies to be taken four times daily for up to seven days. For tearing pain that is aggravated by rest, movement, or damp weather, and wears off with continued movement, use Rust Talk 6C. For tearing pain and lameness, and the affected ankle feels bruised and broken, Use Ruta 6C. Self-help. Rest and support are important for the first few days after the injury. Bandage affected ankle and calf or put the arm in a sling and use the limb as little as possible. Then start exercising very gently, avoiding movements that cause the tendon to tear in the first place. The tendon may take two to three months to heal properly. I have a great many videos now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.